Good evening, Uganda. You're listening to 933KFM. This is the Friday Hot Seat. And I'm joined in studio by an eminent panel of one journalist, a veteran of this show, and another veteran of this show, also special guest tonight. Standing in for Andrew Mwenda is me, Kwezi Tabaro. Two major stories dominated news this week. General Mohose Kainerugaba finally returns to the UPDF, what he called my army, uh, two years ago as uh, the chief of defense forces. That ceremony taking place in Gulu. And one of my panelists, uh, Timothy Kalegera, in a series of tweets and exchanges with uh, the spokesperson of the UPDF uh, earlier on uh, this week had said that the ceremony was not going to happen and that, uh, according to him, uh, General Mohose Kainerugaba is not very happy with uh, the elevation to the office of uh, chief of uh, defense forces but uh, before we go into that uh, the other major story is uh, the intrigue within the national unity platform continues as a bitter war of words continues to ensue between uh, the uh, national unity platform uh, vice president for buganda honorable matthias mpuga and uh, the party president uh, robert Chagulani. Well, depends on who you talk to, whether he's former or current. But joining me in studio in uh, no particular order is a veteran of this show, uh, Timothy Kalegera. I also have uh, Jimmy Achalam from uh, Hard Sounds Uganda. I have uh, still active in the newsroom, uh, Rogers Magala. And a special guest on this show. Uh, I believe he hasn't been on these airwaves for the last 16 or 17 years. Let me see if you can guess by uh, just hearing his voice. Just say good evening, <laughs> listeners. Good evening, listeners. <laughs> I don't know if we could uh, tell, but uh, we're happy to be joined in studio by uh, now Dr. Dennis Matanda. Uh, for many of you who were or are loyal listeners of this station, suddenly this is a name that uh, you're familiar with from 16 years ago. He used to sit in this very seat uh, where I'm seated and uh, host this particular show. He's now an adjunct professor of contemporary American politics and international business at the Metropolitan School of Professional Studies of the Catholic University of America. This is the latest profile I have of you, I hope. <laughs> you haven't acquired a new title. The, the real title is uh, External Trade Consultant for Perseid, the Presidential Advisory Committee on Exports and Industrial Development. That is a more fitting title for me. That's more relevant that's for the more, Ugandan yes, market. Yes, that's more relevant. But before we delve into uh, the stories, uh, Dr. Matanda, first of all, very happy to have you on uh, you. this show. Thank and until much. I know I had interacted with you in some other field, yeah. until the pro uh, the producer of this show, uh, Joseph Bayanga, informed me maybe an hour ago, mm -hmm. I didn't know that you were in the country or that you had even hosted a show on this particular station 16 years ago. Yes. So, ago. two minutes uh, for you to tell us what you've been up to, what you're up to now. So I, I just want to talk about what I'm up to right now because it's of absolute importance. Please I think that many people don't understand how important the African Growth uh, and Opportunity Act. Act, AGOA, is to this country. And the reason this is very important is that it, it, it's a very major signal to the rest of the world that, you know, Uganda can do normal trading relations, but that trade is based on certain criteria and one of the things that Uganda has done it has passed a, a very very important law for the country but I don't think it communicated very well with its strategic partners and that's one of the things that I'm here to do it is to remind Uganda that AGOA is very important and then related to that it's that we as Uganda Passaid uh, with my chairman Odra Krobogo, we have had to spend a bit of time doing a, all the preparations of a conference to bring American people back to show them that, you know, Uganda doesn't pick up uh, minorities or sexual minorities on the street and, and, and take them and into a cooler. That, that, that Uganda has systems, processes, and avenues to 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 to, to process crime and punishment in the country. And in in that portfolio, you role is my role is very simple mm. it is to speak to stakeholders in uganda mm. and stakeholders in the united states to remind them that the relationship between the two countries is of absolute importance that so, uganda plays a strategic role for u.s national security and that the united states plays a very important role in providing what they call interested and disinterested capital so in short you're a lobbyist for uganda in washington always have always will be 
All right, uh, you're listening there to Dr. <laughs> Dennis Matanda, a veteran of this show, and now wears uh, a different hat as a lobbyist for Ugandan causes in uh, the United States. Uh, Timothy Kalagera, I'll begin with you. Your Twitter exchange with the spokesperson of the UPDF. Actually, it was an exchange with him, with anybody in the army. Uh, there was a response from uh, Kano Dewa Kiki. Oh, I don't know. To your tweet. I did not. Uh, you did not see it? But even he himself wasn't sure until the very last minute when that handover was taking place. So, What did you make of the handover ceremony in Gulu? To you, you said uh, it was a ceremony that was likely not to take place? Well, I no, I I'd speculated last Saturday, knowing the CBF in the way that I know him. And this I, is General Mohos Ganerugaba? Yes, and mm. I was just saying that uh, something tells me <laughs> I don't turn up for duty. Uh, <laughs> 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 and he very nearly didn't. Anyway, so he... Sh- the, you know, the original uh, swearing in was supposed to be on Wednesday. Mm. The 28th. Eighth. And then they well, pushed... No, the 28th was yesterday, the 27th. Yes. Mm. And then they pushed it to yesterday. Well, mm. You can fill in the gap there. Uh, what do I think of it? The usual... So you, so you think it was pushed because of the unavailability <laughs> of General Mohose and or it like could have been I, the, I, the presiding I'm officer, really in this case, General Like I say, Salim I'll, Salim. I'll leave it as vague as that. But and the original... Very, you know, you know Kanere Mugomi actually broke the story when he said that the handing over was supposed to be at... Uh, on Wednesday, the mm. 27th, under the home of General Saleh. I think somebody must have said, but we look funny. We claim we're a national army and it's the home of General Saleh, who is not an active soldier today. So it was hastily recently for Gulu Barracks. What does it mean? Nothing, as I've insisted from day one. There is no new power that Kainero Gaba gains that he did not have all these 10, 20, 15 years. Those of you who believe in titles and go by official statements, well, I guess see it as a big development. Mm. But to so now, when he says my army, it actually makes sense. It has always been their army. It's a family army, as I'm telling you, and it's a family government. Right now, we're under the government of the family of the URM70. Mm. And uh, you read so much into the statements by uh, General Salim Saleh. Uh, to quote him, he said, uh, and, and I found this rather interesting or strange. He didn't say General Mohozika and Irugawa. This is the CDF of the UPDF. Mm-hmm. He said General MK. Yes. He said, Gem- General MK, we are so happy to see you back in the UPDF uniform because you had got lost in the recent Nani. Yeah, he, didn't, <laughs> he didn't proceed. I can fill in the word he didn't use, but gone. Yes. But, but just to, uh, to, 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 to cross-check what he said, first and foremost, I don't remember General Mohozik and Erugaba retiring from the army, so why was he congratulating him well, on but coming see, back? But, in the but this the, <laughs> well, you remember, look, well, maybe people were not born yet, that, that erratic, the Amenish kind of era is where we are now. You remember at some stage, uh, the 18th of March, 2022, mm. when he woke up one day and abruptly said he... It he was the 8th army. of March, Women's Day. It was 18th. It was women's day because there was a ceremony happening in Kololo. Okay, I thought mm. it was the 18th. <laughs> anyway, he just announced, but I remember it was the 18th because mm. I remember I, 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 made, I tweeted something on the 14th and four days later the 18th. Mm. And you can always check. He says he's retired from the army. Mm. And that's it, basically. And he, he had had a discussion with his father. Flames filled the room. And he said he was re- resigning from the army. It's the usual confusion of the world of the 70s. Mm. Let me go to someone who is active in the newsroom, uh, Magala. Why the choice of Gulu? Gulu is not the headquarters of uh, the land forces, neither is it the headquarters of the Ministry of Defense. It's not even the, uh, you know, a bombo which used to be the military headquarters. I, 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 I think <laughs> that would serve the interests of uh, conspiracy, conspiracy theorists, theorists mm. like Tim, mm. but I don't think it has any significance. But th- isn't this the first handover that's happening outside of uh, Bombo Ombuya? Yeah, but it can still be made anywhere. It can still be made in But statements. why this one in particular? I don't want to dwell into speculations, but what I want to th- think mm. yeah, this is an event pa- part of the preparatory events of the NRM for the 2026. Uh, but this is a military function. Yes, it Changes is. Changes of it leadership is. within the UPDF. It is, but we cannot... It's not an NRM function. We cannot run away from the r- realistic politics of this country. So in what sense is it an NRM event? It's an NRM event because the president is NRM and the CDF mm. is a son to 
the president. Does that automatically make him NRM? Because he has said the NRM is a reactionary outfit and before he became CDF, he was champion of another outfit called PLU that is not In the fullness the of time, Kwezi, you learn that the CDF at the moment, the leader of the PLU, is destined for the climax of the NRM. Mm. in the fullness of time mm. so whether we agree or not mm. this is what is going to happen and it's just a path mm. leading to somewhere uh, dr matanda for an inside outsider's view what did you make of the changes first of all the elevation of general mohozi kainerugaba puts uganda in a unique category of countries like equatorial guinea uh, which country are the nasingbes from togo and and the others it's rather interesting company for someone of seven is caliber Museveni is an African leader, so there's no specific or special category. Also, we, we, we also have to admit that the longer somebody stays in power, there are going to be certain things that happen. Mm. There are going to be particular loyalties, there are going to be particular elements. So, uh, in, in, from my political science background, which mm. is something that I am going to uh, speak to right now, mm. this move is not surprising. Mm. It is not surprising at all. When somebody has been in power this long, and his uh, siblings or his children or his relatives have achieved a certain level, mm. I'm not surprised that there is going to be a certain elevation. Now, how far does this go because we're about to run out of cabinet slots for them seven family um we only have i mean how many how many slots have we taken without really exaggerating well if you just yes. look at the nuclear family yeah. uh the seven nuclear family president yorim seven is the president of uganda the first lady uh, is the minister for education mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh first son is the uh, uh chief of defense forces uh one of the daughters is an employee within state house let's go back there's another Kennedy. daughter who is uh, possibly running for office in intunga let's in the Back elections. The son-in-law works in the president's office as a presidential yes, advisor. Yes. The brother to the president is the coordinator of the Operation Wealth Creation and also yes. special presidential advisor. Yes. Another son-in-law is uh, head of something at Makere University. Uh, and I, I could go on and on. I've and not I, mentioned I, cousins. I, I I've not mentioned I can tell grandkids. You something very, very simply. Mm. Two American presidents, almost skipping one or two people mm. were father and son the bushes the bushes yes as a, as a simple example uh, and we nearly had the clinton yeah and then we almost and if for example if michelle obama decided to run for president right now there's a very big chance mm. that she could become the next president mm. or the president after the next president mm. i'm not saying that it is uh, acceptable. I'm just saying we should not run around and think that our country is a unique system. Mm. Uganda has a political system with its own machinations. Mm. Uganda has a political system with its own entities. Now, I sound like I'm making a case just because I'm good friends with Audrey Krobogo, but mm. the reality is this. Mm. Politically speaking, I understand that there are things that are going to happen in this country but what i also understand mm. is that i think we're becoming very serious reductionists we are we are minimizing the 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 the, the overall aspects to the aspects around guru around like timothy is mm. talking about we are focusing on whether he has been cdf all this time mm. with all due respect I think that if the president's son is acting in a particular way and he has been in power for all this time the crown heavy is the head that wears head the crown, wears the crown. Mm. and he is going to find ways of passing that power or over to other people but you can also you can also you almost have to admit that people are going to do everything they can mm. to bow down to the powers that be and that includes the family mm. so i almost can understand why uh, even if uh, muhozi might be reluctant to be the cdf he is going to get into this position because they want him to be there interesting pers uh, perspectives there from uh, dr dennis uh, matanda who is a special guest on the show today we'll take a short commercial break and when we come back we'll hear from jimmy achalap the hottest debate on all relevant topics live on KFM's Hot Seat tonight. KFM. KFM's Hot Seat. Hot Seat. Hear the real story behind the story. Coming right at you. Only on 933 KFM. Welcome back from the break. You're listening to the Friday Hot Seat. I'm joined in studio by an eminent panel of one active journalist and pundits to discuss the major stories of the week. Standing in for Andrew Mwenda is me, Kwezi Tabaro. Today in studio, I have uh, on my 
left or right. On my right, I have uh, Jimmy Achalam. I also have uh, Rogers Magala. I have a special guest, uh, Dr. Dennis Matanda. He says he's uh, always been a lobbyist for Uganda in the US, but uh, he's an academic teaching at uh, the Catholic University of America. I also have a veteran of this show, uh, Timothy Kalegera. Timothy, this is your 24th year on the show? 23rd year uh, on the show, uh, uh, Timothy Kalejira, a veteran of the show, and we're discussing the major stories of the week, uh, key amongst them uh, being the elevation of uh, First Son, uh, General Mohozi Kainerugawa, to Chief of Defense Forces, the ceremony happening at the 4th Division headquarters in Gulu, and was presided over by uh, the Special Presidential Advisor on... Uh, on military affairs, uh, that is uh, General Caleb Akandana, who, or popularly known as uh, Salim Saleh, who also happens to be uh, brother to President Yoweri Museveni. Um, earlier on, before we went into the break, uh, Dr. Matanda, you had tried to give a political science academic perspective to the developments in Uganda. But uh, I want to come to you, Jimmy Achalam. Don't you find, you know, this rather interesting especially in uganda scenario but also with uh, the kind of uh, leader that we have in uh, president yori Museveni, came to power as a firebrand marxist reformer republican but with each passing day his government resembles more of a kingdom nyungu yamawe mutesa kabalega and less of a republic Sundiata Keita, actually. Uh, yes, more, more, more of a kingdom than a republic, which is, you know, quite, you know, would be disappointing for the for the for the caliber of uh, individual that President Yoram Seven is. What do you make of it? Of course, with all due respect to the qualifications and the trainings that uh, General Mohozi Kainerugaba has uh, attended, but it would be strange that you are appointed by your your father and then you have a handover presided over by your uncle. Looks more like a family crowning. Uh, they have, they're like showing it directly to us that you can't do anything, it's our thing. Mm. You remember when Museveni talked about uh, I killed the animal? Mm. So they are, it's now a family thing. There's, there's a, what can Ugandans do about it? Mm. Such an event should have taken place like in Bombo or in Buya. Mm -hmm. Maybe if Saleh could have been flown. You know, brought to Kampala mm. to, to sign but for the promotion of General Mohozi to the rank, uh, uh, then Lieutenant General Mohozi to the rank of general, it happened. The ceremony happened in Bombo, and uh, General Saleh travelled to, to Bombo. So, which is why I was asking Rogers Magala earlier, why I, I find it rather interesting that this time around, uh, the, the ceremony it was decided that should it should take place in Gul. Uh, on this, I think Tim is the one who usually... You want to sit your ground to, to Timothy? <laughs> 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 Timothy. By the way, I have to stress, that man is called General Kainerugawa, not General Mohozi. Official titles go with the surname, not the first name. So with but that out of the way, your, your perspective on the, on the matter? Of what matter? That, that 40, 40 years later, the best that... President Yoram Seven could bequeath Uganda is a kingdom akin to Sundiata Keita. It's as embarrassing as it is, that's just the reality. But away from the sarcastic comments, why is it that way? Because um, and that's the path his friend, the other Antari student, is also going to take. The Who is his friend? The, the old, the second head of state from Tari School. Who is this? Just check. Do your PK. Or <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask Chad GBT. Who is the second head of state <laughs> in the world? <laughs> and Chad GBT tells you. So, because the reason being, these of course are really, you can say they're modern states, members of the United Nations Security Council and all that, but in structure, they really are still feudal states. The last time the world had 80% of the population engaged in agriculture. The world as a whole was 1750. Mm -hmm. And what's Uganda's uh, uh, agricultural percentage? I think it's about, 80, about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So in real terms, in actual structural social terms, we're still in... A feudal uh, society. Yes, in the 1760s, 1770s. Mm -hmm. So people like the Museveni's, when they come to stage these revolutionary wars against sitting governments, can't rely on systems by being subversive they necessarily must deal in trust. Trust is the thing that kept the NRM together, the RPF together. And I think you mentioned, is it two, three weeks ago, mm. uh, do, uh, after the show, in our conversation about 1983, these people were virtually in concealment. Mm. Uh, that's a whole story you can tell another day. So, to Museveni, 
the keys to his successful uh, uh, accession to power were trust. And once trust is what secured you, saved your assassination, brought you to power, then trust becomes the only uh, currency by which you run. Mm. And that's why, of necessity, he must work with people he trusts. And in Africa, it's mostly Keith and Kin. Mm. And that's why, in the beginning, he comes with this idea of professional broad-based government. But then, I think there's something that scared him. In October 87, <laughs> a year and a half after he took power, mm. the assassination of Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso. And that's when Seveni panics and it's like, my, 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 okay, so you can and be all this young revolution because really I'm saying he was a Sankara of the time mm. what do I do not to get assassinated and overthrown mm. and the only answer becomes people who will not poison your food will not assassinate you and that can only be relatives so inch by inch whether willingly or not he finds that to keep his government going based on the trust that's the glue to his politics the logic can only be tribes made in a wider sense and relatives in the currencies and we're seeing that down there in the land of a thousand hills mm. this business of um, you know Ian Kagame Sanders comes back where does he get deployed predictably presidential brigade where's the daughter Angie Kagame I don't know as a deputy treasurer mm. the director of run investment but that's the way it begins even if they don't intend to even if he says but these are my children somehow the society alone around them because of its feudal nature when Kagame's son uh, passes out all the focus of newspapers is on him Mm. His daughter is practically the Minister of Finance, even if you make a deputy, director, or something. So as time goes on, these people just rise to the top and come to dominate the government. So that's just the result. There's no other way around it. What does the end look like? Because for, I mean, how many, if it's an issue of trust, so you began with a larger group, comrades you went to the bush with, tribes met, now family members. To what end? You know, it reminds me of the Red Queen in Alice in Wonderland. You just mm. need to keep running to remain in the same place. Exactly. So, will it be another um, 70 family members, prime ministers, vice president? As I don't know. Well, as, as I once joked in one of my Sunday monitor columns, they said uh, the way he went to attack Kabamba with 27 people, at the end, he will be reduced and left with only 27 people. <laughs> all the relatives. <laughs> but again, Tim, Tim Quite seems, a malicious of me. Yes, Magala. Tim, Tim seems to be shifting from from his argument last week. Mm. So last week he uh, said that uh, mm. MK Mohozi Kanegawa had been had been trimmed, his powers had been trimmed. Which is what it is. Exactly. Now when you say that if appointments like the CDF are made, mm. it's like it's destined to places of where government will be no, dominated. No, 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 the only difference, just to yeah. clarify, the only difference which many people seem to miss, including your BBCs and CNNs, is that there is no new power Mohozi gains that he has not had. Okay, all fine, Tim. Don't years. you think now, as CDF is headed to a position where he will dominate power no, no, in the he, country? No, he actually, and that's the point, the key point we're missing. Mm -hmm. Mohozi's greatest experience of power, if you had to write his life story deep in his thoughts, is that since he was a young boy, he has always been seen as this project of his son, and at some stage of his father, yes, of his father, it gets quite irritating to always be someone's father. You're married, you have children, but everyone just sees you as your father's son. That Twitter hand of his and that MK movement, PLU, you know, that side, was the first time Hosey could be like any other person to believe this was his self made identity. I tweet what I want to past handlers. This was him at his freest and his most glorified state. Mm. Taking him to the CDF position, which for many of you who look at titles, thinks a promotion. For him, it's really quite a demotion because he has always practically been the CDF. And that's why I'm saying that uh, this system as it is, based on that glue, is, well, can only do that, can keep only going with that formula the formula is starting to wear out and of course the more it wears out the more then he gets paranoid as he should logically and then trust relatives more and more digs himself more into the Alice in the, mm. Alice in the Rwanda land uh, <laughs> story. Uh, Dr. Matanda, no part of the work that you do uh, as a lobbyist of course is to look at countries, look at risk profiles. Increasingly with Uganda, if you're an investor interested in the long term, the next 30, 40 years, mm. 15 years ago, maybe the future was a bit clearer, presidential term limits, then age limits. 
but increasingly now it's it's hard to tell uh what a post seven in uganda would look like or how that process you know first might be navigated first i have to say timothy i really really missed your deep analysis on these things it, 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 you listen to what timothy said mm. and in my opinion that is absolutely astute. Whether you like it or not, it's absolutely right. Yeah. However, I tend to that, sound... That seven will, will end up with 27 people just like that, that, was, funny. that was funny. <laughs> that was really, really funny. But the, just, just, just a joke. <laughs> but I, I remember... But can you see, he's actually... He started off uh, with 27, <laughs> expanded to a national... You know, the height and of the seven, he was 84. That. Then he shrunk back to 27 relatives, <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> That is funny. <laughs> Natasha was at Children's Ward in Bukedia, <laughs> MK Operating <laughs> Theatre. <laughs> You know, the reality now the mighty fall. Yes, the, the reality is this. Mm. Looking at Uganda's profile, yeah. what's very interesting is throughout the Museveni presidency, Uganda has been Uga has been the world's most entrepreneurial country. By necessity. No. By, by rumor. By being the world's most entrepreneurial country. Let's not forget that this country... Oh, against what alternative? Against the Philippines? Uh, no, I'm saying against, against what China? alternative? If you're not an entrepreneur in Uganda, suddenly there's no job for you. I guess that's the point. Mm. That is the point. So it can't be counted as an achievement. I mean, Circumstances in, in my opinion, dictate. In my opinion, mm. the reason that Uganda is growing at 7.5% mm. vis-a-vis Kenya mm. is very, very indicative of the country's DNA. Mm. And I think that one of the things that has happened, because you're asking me about Uganda's risk profile. profile yes. In my opinion, Uganda's mm. risk profile has actually improved. Because what has happened is General Kaineru Gaba has been further and deeper, or put deeper into an institution. Mm. There is a very big chance that being the CDF mm. will constrain him, or restrain him. Puts him in a bit of a different situation. It puts the mantle on him, the real mantle that Timothy has been talking about. I disagree that the power is the power in the being office of the CDF, CDF mm. is very different from the power of being the a special presidential son, advisor, mm. a presidential advisor, and all those things. I think that this stuff is going to weigh him down. I think that it gives him a certain institutional aspect because guess what? If they called a meeting of all the CDFs of Africa, mm. he would be in the room. And he cannot actually travel because mm. there are sanctions against him. Mm. And there are elements against him. In my opinion, that's going to be a colossal embarrassment, not just for Uganda, but for him personally. Interesting point. I want to interrogate that further after we come back from the break. KFM's Hot Seat. It's hot, it's live, provocative, and digs deep into the issue. On KFM's Hot Seat tonight, KFM's Hot Seat covers all the relevant topics every weekday, 7 to 8 p.m. Welcome back from the break. You're listening to 933 KFM. This is the Friday edition of the Hot Seat. Standing in for Andrew Mwenda is me, Kwezi Tabaro. In studio, I have Timothy Kalegera, uh, Dennis Matanda, I have Rogers Magala, and Jimmy Achalam. We're discussing the major stories of the week. In the first two quarters of the show, we're discussing the elevation of uh, General Mohozi Kainerugaba to Chief of Defense Forces. Uh, in about a minute, uh, Dr. Matanda, if you could conclude your thought, you seem to suggest that... Uh, in this elevation to the office of CDF, uh, the president is trying to put some structure um, uh, on uh, uh, General Mohozi Kanerugaba and in a way try to contain what many consider his wayward to finish the thought, To finish the thought, Uganda's risk profile is based on the number of institutions. Mm -hmm. Uganda has a very, very institutionalized army. The person who is overseeing the army is General Kaineru Gaba. From now. that perspective, mm. now, from that perspective, having all these responsibilities probably means that the country's institutionalization with a person of this profile perhaps either goes up or down. In my opinion, this is this elevation is a very good curtail and a very good way to control uh, an individual like this. All right, coming to you, Rogers Magala. Let's shift gears from uh, the PLU and National Resistance Movement slash Resistance Army slash UPDF to the National Unity Platform. Mm -hmm. What's happening in that young party? Mayhem. Mm. Uh, I think what is happening between the deputy president mm. Uganda region and uh, the president himself um, is something that 
is not about the sin he made Mm. of 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 rec- the sin he committed he committed mm. of taking the 500 service award mm. it is more of a tip of that maybe he was a mole and now they need to kick him out a mole for who for a, a, a mole for the for the for the, for the government for mm. the nrm mm. just like we've seen these stories in dp with nobat mau and fdc with the um, nandala and and poa so the ultimate and oh, the end of all this is kicking puga out of nup not only out of the leadership the plight of leadership of nup but out of nup the next thing we shall see is he will be denied a ticket mm. to represent mukungwe nyendo mm. you know that with nup they don't go through primaries and i don't think it's going to happen this time mm. so it will be about the leadership of nup either to give him the card Mm. to represent but as a, as, a, or a, not. as a three time mp don't you think that the party perhaps needs mpuga more than he needs the party absolutely i think the party needs mpuga in the essence of building its structures mm. not mpuga as a legislator but mpuga as an admirable figure in mm. buganda mm. and masaka mm. and building the parties beyond buganda mm. so it was wrong in the moral sense of it mbuka being party of the award mm. but again it wasn't the best way of 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 the party dealing with it dealing with it and actually it would be that now it's shifting from the mpuga issue mm. and now it's getting to nup's ability Mm. to handle dispute mm. now we saw how it handled uh, kagabo mm. honorable to kagabo to kagabo now we are seeing what is happening with mpuga mm. but now what is happening with joel mm. it is actually the same issue uh, 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 when you're speaking on the radio please mention joel senyonyi joel, <laughs> joel could be any uh, joel in the senyonyi, yes, because please. because nup decided the president decided uh, bobby wine decided to look at it as a moral issue not a legal issue mm. now in that parliament mm. there is nobody that has clean hands mm. if you are to say corruption corruption is a multifaceted mm. it's element. the glue that holds that part together nobody that is that is and you might find that if team were in that it's parliament teams, it's team's so. time uh, team you tend to have a historical take to to these uh, issues and trends i saw two interesting messages coming from Bug- Uganda mm. that were rather instructive one is the Kawaka's Easter message reported in the Daily Monitor today where he says don't betray comrades the Kawaka cautions in Easter message yeah. and the Katikiro a few days ago when members of the National Unity Platform went to pay a courtesy call on him he said much as you have differences kindly try to keep them internal and resolve them do you think This moment reminds Buganda of that missed opportunity just before independence the infighting within Buganda DP that eventually brought in Obote and the crisis that followed very well uh, narrated of history and, and also fast uh, fast forward to today um if you jump f- through these decades here uh, at the political level the strongest Buganda as an entity has been is just what you've alluded to the dp of uh, the 1961 self-gov- <laughs> the self government uh, self governing administration of bench when 61 62 and then one could argue 1980 but then no anything after 66 was weak so for the first time in 50 years or in most people's lifestyle uh, sorry lifetimes this new represents it's not a ganda party but there's no doubt this is its home base so it represents the strongest united expression buganda has had buganda tends to be notorious as a place where you know this was easily bought out easily fragmented to see buganda come out as one voice there's already there's one layer the upper layer of buganda's unity is of course around the kingdom and the loyalty to the kingdom but the secondary level the ordinary practical politics noop is the strongest buganda has been mm. in symbolism in solidity in end to end every part every but also uniting place. buganda across the board middle Because, class yes, exactly. all the way to peasants yes when you consider the the riff raff world that the bobby wines come from that ganja smoking world the, and, the one that andrew mind mm. was dismissed i wish andrew could come for this show because remember when andrew was saying 
uh, this that whatever is it uh, people power can't win beyond is it a kamacha or something <laughs> people have words to swallow anyway so for noob to come out from the most unlikely quarters not from the traditional guys of budo educated mango aligned world but more like from the grassroots upward and really infuse confidence and unity in, in Buganda. that was like some achievement so it really is painful if you're in Uganda seeing how close how strong this party came and inspired the people to start just halfway through the term to begin falling apart. But um, on the other hand, if you see it from Bobby Wine's point of view, if you see the fate of uh, DP and UPC and now most painfully, most recently FDC, you really would be naive to take chances over this person called Urim 70. So any rumor, and that's why I'm beginning to think that this thing about the 500 million, yes, a nuisance, but it's not the reason why mm -hmm. these people are so adamant about dealing with him. It's just a crisis they're facing. If you, if you let Mpuga go for another six months in that party, before you know what's happening, what's happened to the FDC can just be falling. So I think they've just said on this one here, we won't make the mistake of the FDC. Yeah. Be extreme, yes. And, and also when you see, people argue and say, no, nah, no will fall apart. But the trouble is that Mpuga is from Buganda which is already, as we know, like overwhelmingly noob. So in other words, the, the worry would have been, let's say, Nambeshe from Eastern Uganda, maybe. But there's, it cannot lose support in Buganda because of... Uh, Mpuga. Mpuga. Even if Mpuga goes, they can't suddenly... But he's one of the most senior Buganda, pol uh, uh, Buganda politicians uh, in the true, true, but it's, it's a bit like, let's say, what? The US, let's say, the, you know, the national basketball team, mm -hmm. the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. Even if two of those players are injured, there's any number of six foot nine <laughs> athletes you can get from the Chicago Bulls. I mean, I don't know, the Los Angeles Lakers. So there's no limit to the pool that they can get a substitute for Mpuga from. Dennis, your take? I don't know if you've been following the yes, chaos I within the new P party. Mm. I'm, I'm going to try and draw from what Timothy just said. For me, the, the, the strength of Noop is admirable. I, 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 I cannot tell you how much I admire Bobby Wine. Mm -hmm. Just from the fact that he's been able to balance his, uh, his rise as an artist, mm -hmm. he has been able to speak with confidence, with intelligence, but there's something that he did that many people do not understand just because of what he did for example in the united states he was able to undermine a government like the ugandan government mm -hmm. what did he do in washington just as an example basically mm -hmm. show that there is a vacuous state and that there there's human rights torture bobby wine did all these things mm -hmm. for me what that shows mm -hmm. is there is a very strong institutionalization capacity in uganda mm -hmm. what that also shows is that something is missing vis-a-vis -vis the government mm -hmm. and i think those are things that need to be put on the table i know people get very angry when you yuxtapose bobby wine with uh yori kaguta museveni but they are both leaders of parties mm. secondly you can also say oh this man will never be president i disagree mm. there is a very big chance that bobby wine with his popularity could be president mm. he just needs to do a few things that i don't know mm. Interesting. Uh, Jimmy, last word before we go into, <laughs> into the break. <coughs> what can I say? I think it's uh, it's very difficult for people. You think these are bath pangs of democratic consolidation within the party or really signs that the end is near for NUP as we know it? They might emerge stronger. Mm. It looks like damaging to the party now. Mm. But... Uh, I think Mpuga should have... Uh, you know, Bobby Wine his popularity and all this, when you go against a principle of a party, you are bound to lose. Mm. So in the end, I think Mpuga might be edged out, he might have to, you saw his response in a mm. tweet, mm. Um, they had to teach them, if they tell you, we have, we have, we have, you're no longer our vice president, how can you impose yourself when they no longer need you? They, perhaps, but you see, that was the decision by the NUP leadership, not by the NUP membership. You see, I think, they could have had a dialogue. Mm. The approach was a bit radical. Mm. Maybe you realize that it made a mistake. First of all, that kind of award, they should have informed the party that this is taking place so that the party knows. Mm. But now he's left alone to deal with it. Mm. If he had informed the party that, you know, this thing is taking place, 
what do you what do you think so sort of and and bobby wine some sometimes uh the mps might look at him and they think he's not smart enough we are better than him mm -hmm. and so there's 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 lack of trust some some people think these new arrivals are planning to you know to take over mm. so if you, i think is being smart in the decision it takes all right this is uh, uh robert chaglan yes all right we'll take a short commercial break when we come back the last segment of this show kfm's hot seat it's hot seat hot seat hear the real story behind the story coming right at you only on 933 kfm Welcome to this last segment of the Friday edition of the Hot Seat. Standing in for Andrew Mwenda is me, Kwezi Tabara. And today in studio, I have a special guest, Dennis Matanda. Uh, used to be one-time sh uh, show host here about uh, 16 years ago, uh, joining us uh, today. I have Timothy Kalegera, I have uh, Rogers Magala and uh, Jimmy Achalam. We've been discussing the major stories of the week. Kiamanga Switch is the ongoing intrigue within the National Unity Platform. Uh, Jimmy, I want to start with you in this uh, last segment. We have about... Uh, six minutes to go um what does the future portend for nup as we head into 2026 because certainly bobby wine is uh, stronger today on the national scene within the nup than he was in the lead up to the elections in 2021 can puga put up a fight and still manage to salvage something from nup as we head into 2026 you think this is a fight he's going to lose. Mm -hmm. You know, like I told you, let me give an example of FDC when it was still one. Mm -hmm. If someone when came... They are now two parties? You know, there's, you, know <laughs> you understand. So, <laughs> so if someone came up against Besige mm -hmm. and started, would you... Could only be one winner in that fight. There are some people with charisma, people who are trust. When they speak, people listen to them. Mm -hmm. So Bobby Wine is that kind of person now here. So I think Mpuga thinks maybe let me just keep fighting mm. you know sometimes admitting that uh it was wrong i did this uh it's just it's just giving it a you mm. know trying to do what it can do best but okay. it's it's a very difficult one rogers Magala, don't you think that sometimes it's important to keep someone in the tent pissing outside and outside pissing in the tent because yes certainly bobby wine is very strong within the nup and is not about to be toppled as party president but the longer this fight continues the party is being distracted and uh, the attention of the country now is no longer on the missing uh, opposition supporters on the agenda on which nup stood but on which member of nup is being bribed by which member of the nrm uh, what the leader of opposition former lead of opposition spent on this trip what the current lead of opposition i've been seeing exhibitions now about uh, the current lead of opposition joel senior can that young party withstand such level of intrigue um we have to go back and realize or oh, the party itself it has to realize that they are in a struggle mm -hmm. and just like all struggles all new parties they face challenges mm -hmm. and now the way nup is resolving its challenges it makes you it leaves you at crossroads whether they can advance to the main goal of winning power mm. or not mm. in as much as <coughs> nup do not believe <coughs> in the current museveni at least they have a lot to learn from the museveni the revolutionary mm. how he used to handle issues his solomonic ways of handling dispute and differences and differences you had of people like Sam Magara the issues of coups mm. the way he handles um, when I, I read something and it was even very the merger of uh, PRA and uh, and uh, the yeah. forces to get NRM and, and, and you and see NRM. Mm. even the people that were opposing him he decides to work with them look at his the way he had advanced the way he championed the way he bought trust mm. so so this is something that you feel like there is uh, a bridge between Bobby Wine, who is overzealous mm. for the cause he's fighting for, mm. and the foot soldiers, they are in tandem, mm. and they say that when a man believes in a cause that he feels is so valuable, he can die for it. But again, he can kill for it. Mm. So Bobby Wine and the foot soldiers, they are in tandem, they have that power, the zeal. Mm. But again, the the MPs, mm. the people, the Mpugas, the... Twahaka Gabos. Twahaka Gabos. Uh, literally all MPs, mm. 
I feel they are not patriots. They have that element mm -hmm. that is missing to die for the for the struggle which Bobby Wine has. But then the people that he's working with, they can do what Mpuga is doing. Not what we've always said about Mseven. It's, it's always right, apart <laughs> from the people that work with him. Yeah. But uh, Matanda, two interesting contrasts here. If you look at the NRM in the lead up to uh, to 2026 they are right now registering party members across the country they are realigning absorbing uh, outfits like PLU that had you know created some excitement among its young people two of the leading uh, champions of PLU are now members within the Museveni cabinet and now they are campaigning for the president in 2026 uh, this, the appointment of uh, General Mohose Kanerogawa as uh, CDF in a way ensures that another important arm uh, and tool in seven is uh, toolbox ahead of 2026 which is security his family in uh, in the hands of his uh, trusted son and then on the other side you find NUP split uh, uh, amongst themselves um, can't even gain a consensus within Buganda and yet somehow they're supposed to be fighting against the NRM in 2026 the big difference between Dr. Kano Kiza BCJ and uh, uh, Robert Chagulanyi, Robert Chagulanyi mm -hmm. is that Robert Chagulanyi is extremely, extremely charismatic. He doesn't have a hoarse voice. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have all these uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. He also has name recognition mm -hmm. in Uganda. But just voice sounds nice for jazz music. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the, I'm, I'm, I'm only, I'm only, I'm only juxtaposing these, these, these two, these mm -hmm. two elements. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that we cannot take away is something that Timothy talked about earlier. Mm. We cannot underestimate the power of social media, which is something that is of absolute importance today in the world, whether it is Uganda or the United States. Which means all these guys who are playing roles in the middle, mm. there is a direct line between Bobby Wine and each of his people. Mm. He doesn't need he intermediaries. He doesn't need intermediaries. Mm. What that means is that you have to remember that nope, it might look like it is a serrated party right now, but it is actually just getting more structured and tiered. Mm. I don't think it's getting weaker. But what that means as well is I will not be surprised if there is on the opposite end uh, a need to emulate what Noop has done, mm. whereby you use resources and social media and all the government institution elements to do all those other things. I don't think Noop is, is getting serrated. I think Bobby Wine is a very strong leader. Timothy, you'll have the last word on this show in a minute. Well, very briefly, the only fortune for Noop right now is that uh, the collapse of DP and the virtue, the splitting up of FDC in two has left us with a two-party state as it was in 1980. So even if Mpuga would want to leave Noop right now, he himself knows where else do you turn to. If FDC had been the FDC of just, let's say, four years ago, he would very easily have crossed off. But now it's just, it's either you're in Noop or you're in the NRM. So from that point of view, he's logical in saying he will not leave this party because without that party, we saw people like uh, this uh, Tega Sebagala mm. um, running Kawempe. But when these new people, he, this already was an established Kawempe person, but when these new people come up and uh, he's kicked out. So now Zimpuga himself, he is strong in Yendo, Masaka, mm -hmm. up to this point. But the way Noop, that's what I was saying, Noop is just this sort of fun, this wave that will bring people. <coughs> Let them just put up like Azake in that Nyendo area against mm -hmm. uh, Mpuga. Mm -hmm. He will just come and do a landslide against him. So Mpuga knows very well for all this pain, he's best left fighting in that party. Independent, not enough. Obviously going to the NRM is a kill of his career. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Timothy Kalegera. Thank you very much, Dennis Matanda. Good to see you after 16 years. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Rogers Magala, as well as Jimmy Achelam. And to our dear listener, happy Easter. We'll be right back next week, same time. The hottest debate on all relevant topics, live on KFM's Hot Seat Tonight.